What's going on, people? We are Tottenham TV back here for another post-match fan show and the last post-match fan show of pre-season as we've lost 4-2 to Bayern Munich today in the Juan Campo Juan Gampa Cup. <laughs> Let me get that right. <laughs> Let me get that right. Um, look, we lost 4-2 today, but I really don't think it was a 4-2 loss performance, should I say. I thought there were some really good standout performances today, in my opinion, specifically from Bissouma, Lo Celso, Davidson Sanchez, um, and there was one more in there, a slip slipping my mind. Uh, um, Bissouma, Lo Celso, Davidson Sanchez, and... Um, there was one more, who was it? Uh, Perisic. Perisic, that's it. Ivan Perisic. It's been a long day here at We Are Tottenham TV. But um, look, it's, it's a, it was a really good display. I thought um, the first, not the one of the sightings of Ange Ball was, it was just really good to see. You can really see something coming together at Tottenham Hotspur right now. Um, as much as, you know, we're still letting in too many goals and the defensive display wasn't spot on from the likes of Pedro Porro and Eric Dyer, I think... Um, Players are really buying into what Ange wants to do at the moment, and it's great to see. I'm really excited for the new season, which is just a few days away, and it's time to get all our lovely guests on. Uh, any any words from you, Sim, before we go in? Yeah, I'm, I think when I sum up today's game, I know in the end the records will show we lost 4-2, but I think for the first hour, that's like the best judgment of uh, of where the teams are at because you had... Barcelona's first team out and you had our second string out and we were basically that was like where the game was at at that point and yes Barca made five subs and then the, the things swung in their favour and uh, we made some subs brought some more, even more inexperienced players and then ended up crumbling in the end but in terms of how things were shaping up when their first team was against our second team and both full pelt we were very much dominant very much on top and that's what i can take away from this game and how the encouragement i can take away um even though we started the game off slowly and even though barcelona looked like in the first few minutes they were going to absolutely tear us to shreds we didn't let that get to us we um continued to play the way that we um that Ange has basically set us up to play. And all of a sudden you saw the pressing started to um, get more effective. All of a sudden we started to create more chances. We started to defend really, really well. Barca were really struggling before they made those five subs. And obviously in a, Premier, in a, in a normal game, Barcelona aren't going to be able to make you know five subs like that just off the bat and, and swing momentum. It's going to be a different case. So I think we can take away from that first hour really encouraging signs of where we're going. Even though we had our second string out, we're still... Um, sticking to how Ange wants to play. Everyone knows their roles. We really don't stop. Yeah, and it's really, really encouraging that even though we're um, even though we're changing our whole team, you know, a lot of the times when you make a lot of changes, you see a, um, basically a bit of a mishmash and maybe a bit of a lack of fluidity. But that wasn't the case today. Everyone knew. Um, everyone's really getting accustomed to how Ange wants to play. And uh, look, it was disappointing. We ended up losing uh, at the end of the day. But I thought the first hour was the main bit of the game, and we absolutely dominated that bit. Is it a testament to Ange before we start bringing on the guests? Is it a testament to Ange that you know when you look back at previous managers? I know it's just a pre season friendly today so I shouldn't really go overboard but is it a testament to Ange that in the previous tenures of Jose Mourinho and Antonio Conte whenever we did play the second string we got completely ripped to shreds we saw nothing in those games that we can cling on to but in this game against Barcelona we play the second string and we actually dominated the game for large parts of it yeah and I think that is impressive I think that is something uh, there is something to say about that obviously he has to do it in a in a, in a competitive game first but I think the fact that we did it in this kind of game was something it's, we haven't seen uh, in a very very long time especially this many changes and even though we made so many changes you can still see very clearly how we want to set up and how we want to play and patterns of play and what Ange is trying to do so that is for me is very encouraging and I, th I think that shows that the whole squad is buying into what Ange wants to do and it's very clear um, direction over to the players of how he wants to play and it, clearly it's coming across quite simply to them yeah are you surprised how quickly it's taken to to bring that to Spurs slightly I thought maybe it'd take longer but again you know I could say I'm very surprised that we're getting to grips with it and then we go and lose to Brentford you know what I mean yeah. so can't speak too soon Absolutely. Well, it is time for you guys to have your say. If you want to call in, the link is in the community section for gold members. So without further ado, let's bring on Mr. Halo himself, Brian Daigle. <laughs> <laughs> oh, How are you doing, Daigle? You all right? doing? I'm good. Is the light doing it again? 
It was I've for a one. second. It was for a second. <laughs> but um, well, talk to me. What are your thoughts on the game today? Um, loads and loads of positives. Loads and loads and loads of positives. But I think get rid of the two negatives straight away, which is Poro is not a right back, cannot be a right back, should not be played as a right back. Um, I don't understand why Spence is on the market if uh, if he thinks Poro is a right back. I'm I'm sorry, he just can't do it. Um, and Regulon, they were the two. I mean, Dyer was Dyer, but uh, those two were the weaknesses. In all honesty, I think every uh, there's a load more positives, but they're the two weaknesses. What do you reckon about that, guys? Well, if you want to start with the negatives, do you want to speak about the goalkeeper, Vicario? What did you make out of him today? Until the fourth goal, I was uh, I was kind of like, it was okay what he was doing. I was liking, you got to remember, you guys have sat with me on many a time when I see the ball get passed back to Hugo Lloris. And you know what I go through uh, and how, how crazy I get. Um, I don't get that with him, but other parts of his game are concerning, especially that how he was for that fourth goal. Mm. That was strange. I think I think you're being a tad harsh on Parra. I didn't think he was that bad today, personally. I actually thought it was a bit better oh. than uh, I actually thought it was a bit better than he had been in other games. Uh, to be fair, especially uh, defensively, I thought the first goal he was terrible, but after that, I thought he improved a lot. I agree with you, with Regalon, though. I thought um, you could make a case for all four goals he had a part to play in all of them. So I mean, Regalon com got completely torn apart by a 16-year-old tonight. Yeah, yeah. I mean. You look at it, Sim, when you were just saying that Poro was better defensively than he has been, let's face it, that hasn't been hard. <laughs> that has not been hard for him to do. That, that's, like, that, 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 that's like, well done, you've done your job. Um, right, go, as, a, as a right wing, as a right winger, I love him. I think he can offer so much more and do much more and can, and can be such an asset to us. But defensively, I just don't think he's there. And Regulon, thank God we got destiny. Yeah. Um, I think uh, after that game, there is absolutely no question that our defence looks a hell of a lot more solid with Destiny and Emerson. Yeah, absolutely. Emerson look, is by far the better right back we have, by far. Yeah, I, I'd actually agree with that, to be honest. But obviously, um, both of them have negatives and positives. Emerson's not that great going forward, as well as he is great going the other way. And Poro is the complete polar opposite. So, I mean, potentially in games where we're really expected to dominate the ball, maybe Poro is the better option there. You, you, you know what it is, Ben, like you said? Um, I think the thing is, if you're playing right back, not right wing back, your job is to defend. That's That's your job. And Emerson is far better at doing it. If we played a right wing back, then I would go with Poro or, uh, yeah, I would go with Poro. But I just, I do not feel comfortable at all with Poro at right back. He just hasn't been able to do it. But like I said, going forward, I love him. I think he's yeah. brilliant defensively. I just think he's not good enough. Look, Brian, enough of the negatives today because there are yeah, a lot enough, of positives, a, a lot of oh, positives yeah. to get through today. So where, where do you want to start? Mate. Uh, listen, Bissouma is going to take all the plaudits, and rightfully so. I heard Simeon say it multiple times. That's the guy we bought from Brighton, and he's spot on. He is spot on, and I thought he was absolutely fantastic. But there's a player I want to talk about, and I think I said he was our marquee signing last season before he kicked the ball. I think even Perisic has to stay at this football club. Has to. Him at left wing and doing what he does for Croatia... He's been very, very good this preseason, and I just hope we don't sell him. But like I said, Basuma, by far man of the match. Obviously, you've got Davinson Sanchez, who plays an absolute blinder. Um, but for me, Perisic really, really uh, uh, stood out for me. Yeah, um, I thought he had a really good game as well. There are other players. There's a certain player you didn't mention who scored a brace today in Oli Skip. What did you make out of his performance? Uh, who needs who needs gift or ban or uh, or the the guy from Porto when you got Oli Skipper just waiting to take over Harry Kane should he go? Our striker <laughs> is there. We've been playing him in the wrong position. One of our free own. Free Oli Skip, yeah, free Oli Skip. Let him go up front, mate. The first one, okay, he was in the right place at the right time after the Celso shot. But that header, that header was wonderful, Bullet. and especially Perisic cross, but uh, unbelievable, unbelievable. It was good. I, I, they were saying in the commentary, obviously, that they don't think he's scored two goals ever in his career. Hmm. Uh, I don't think he's scored two goals in a season. 
<laughs> and he's got a good bang to it at Barcelona. <laughs> um, like I said, there were there were so many that after going one nil down, the resilience and the, the the want to still attack and play football that way was was really really impressive. And we we took it to them. We were absolutely took it to them in that first half. Second half played some wonderful stuff as well. Just yet again at the end, the defence. Who would have thought the defence let us down? Um, but thankfully that's been. Sure, I mean, who would have thought? I mean, one of the best moments, I don't know if you guys saw it, it was in the first half. Dyer went to make a clearance as the ball came into it, and, and the commentator even said, Dyer to easily clear, and he kind of skied it, and he went, well, kind of. And I was just like, that just sums it up. I was like, that just sums it up. When the commentator's going, yeah, Dyer should easily, uh, uh, yeah, I got that wrong. Um, but, but, but yeah, it was, like I said, there are so many positives to take. Solomon, um, even, even, do you know what? I'll give Regulon his credit for the goal. For the first mm. one with his link up play with Perisic. Mm. Going forward, again, he's got, we've got these, we've got these wing backs that we play today that are much better in an advanced position as opposed to doing what they, they, they were employed to do today and asked to do. They can't defend, but Besuma, mate, Besuma was outstanding. Absolutely no, he... outstanding. He really was, but a player who I want to talk to you about, who you just you touched on a bit before, was Davinson Sanchez. I mean, what a performance yep. from him today! Absolute man mountain, and it's strange to say after a four-two loss, you're going to give credit to a defender, and especially someone like Davinson Sanchez, who he slated so much in the past. In that performance today, was he putting himself in the shop window, or was he giving a message to Ange? So first, of, first of all, this, this is what this. There's this fan base, we just love to argue and bicker, don't we? So I put a tweet up about halfway through the second half and said, do you know what? Davidson Sanchez comes in for criticism left, right and centre. And for Blew some of his for performances... for the back end of last season. Mate, exactly. And some of his performances, don't get me wrong, have warranted criticism. The personal abuse, completely, completely not. But we are football fans and we can criticise and praise performances, players, their form, whatever you want to break it down as. So I said, you know what? He comes in for a hell of a lot of stick. Today he de deserves praise. Mate, it was like I just called him Lionel Messi. They're like, <laughs> oh my God, what are you talking about? It's one game, get rid of him. Oh my God, he's pathetic. Brian, don't say things like that. I'm like, calm down. Does he need to go? I think he does. Would I rather, do I think he offers more in a Postacoglu high line than Eric Dyer, a hundred percent. They both need to go. But Davidson Sanchez today put in a fantastic performance in this game. He needs to be praised. Some of the blocks, some of the timing of his um, interceptions were like his first season with us. Not saying that he's now turned the corner and he's now got to be a starter, but you can give credit to a a player that has been out of form and say, do you know what? You've had a good game. And today, he most certainly did. You've got one choice, Brian. You can either keep Davinson Sanchez for the upcoming season or you can sign Clement Longley on a three-year contract. What are you doing? Keep Davinson Sanchez. Keep Davinson Sanchez. <laughs> Listen, I'd rather play Davinson Sanchez with a broken leg than Clement Longley be back in the squad. <laughs> so when we're talking about the extreme of what, I, uh, what I'd want... Um, Clement Longley, under no circumstances. Should... Listen, I, you you mentioned it today in uh, in your update, Ben and Sim. If you bring Longley in, that's another three four year contract on whatever wage it is. So forget whether there's a fee or not. That's a three or four year or two year contract, whatever. Where it'll be on a big wage. He's apparently a backup. Um, you're stopping the development of Alfie Div uh, Alfie Divine uh, Dorrington. Um, you got Ashley Phillips in. There's, be I'm sure we could loan a, diff a better defender, or something different. Um, so, so yeah, that that that's got to stop. That's got to stop. Kevin Longley can't be at this club. What about Richarlison today? One of the players who maybe has gone under the radar um, in terms of a lack of involvement compared to a lot of the other players today. Was it another frustrating performance for you, or did you appreciate maybe the work he did do? A bit of both. A bit of both, Simeon. Um, he, he, you know, this, this game, like, I think we're seeing with Ange as well, that the the play isn't all going to be dominated by the one up top, like it has been with Harry Kane. And that's not, that's not a stack at Harry Kane. Harry Kane is world-class and he's been what we need. But you can see that the, the style of football, more and more people are getting involved. It's not just try and get it to Kane or, 
or whatever. So um, I think uh, it was a bit of frustration, but his work rate is nonstop. We're pressing, we're, 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 we're playing this press, we're closing down people, and he does lead that. But he needs to be more active. He needs to, to, to get more involved in the final third and get into better positions. But that will come when it's him. That will come yeah. more and more he gets me. Um, but he played against uh, the the city, uh, the Lion City Sailors. Obviously, he didn't play against Shakhtar due to uh, injury or the knock, whatever you want to say. And he came in today. Let's see what happens when the start of the season comes, when games are coming thick and fast. But uh, yeah. I, I would have to say it was a bit of both for me for, for Richardson's performance. What about you? Yeah, I thought he was. Look, I thought he tried hard, and there were a couple of moments which were good where he did. There was one really nice turn on the edge of the box where he had a nice effort, which was just over the bar. But unfortunately, just wasn't getting involved enough um, on the ball. But off the ball, I think he did some really good work um, in terms of closing people down, making nice tactical fouls. His pressing was always good as ever. Talking about. Richarlison potentially getting minutes or not next season. That leads us on to Harry Kane. Now, we've had two stories tonight. Gary Jacobs said Tottenham are resigned to losing Harry Kane with Bayern, in the wake of Bayern's new £94 million pound bid. Um, yep. Matt Law says in the wake of Tottenham's, oh, in the wake of Bayern's new bid, Tottenham are leaning towards keeping Harry Kane. So where do you sit on this? Uh, you know, with a few days left before the season starts, Tottenham, uh, we know if Kane is here for, for the Brentford game, apparently that means he's going to be here for the season. So who do yeah. you believe more? Are Tottenham resigned to losing him or do you think Tottenham are leaning towards keeping him? Um, Joe, well, I did, I did an update with uh, Ben on Saturday and we were talking about this phone call that didn't happen, that did happen. It was a secret. He is going, he's not going. People think he's going, people... This isn't going away. I, I, I said to you when I was with you yesterday, Simeon, I still think there is one big bid that is going to push the boat out and it, it will get over the line. And I, I I don't want it to happen, but I think it is going to happen. I think Harry Kane is going to go. I'm not budging for it. Listen, I want to be proven wrong. I want to come on here and say, yeah, do you know what? I was wrong. Harry Kane is still a Spurs player. Thank the Lord. We've got him for another season. But I just think this relentless, whether you want to call it bad uh, bad tactics by uh, by Munich, which it has been, um, and everything they've done, I just think this is going to keep going until they get the deal done. And I think he will go. I really do. Do you think the ninety four million pound bid gets accepted? I think I think ninety four. I think now. I think tomorrow or Thursday, we get one more bid, which will be closer to a hundred mil. May not hit it. But I think there will be one more. And then I think we might be talking, OK, let's start seriously talking. I don't think 94 is going to do it, but I think one more bid will be incoming. And that will be the one that does it. But and, I don't want uh, it to be. I have to keep saying I don't want it to be. And finally, um, with the season just around the corner this weekend, is the brand new season, the kickoff against Brentford. How ready do you feel we are and how positive are you going into the season? You know what? I was just speaking with 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 Ross in the in the back just beforehand. I said, you know what? One of the great things I think Ange has done is previous managers on a game like this beforehand, your Canes, your Madison, your Romero's, all the players he left behind would have flown out, would have flown out for no reason, not to be on the pitch, just cluck up some air miles, be with the lads, and then fly back. I think them staying at home is going to have a huge impact because they'll just stay and they haven't got to do all the flying, travelling, whatever. They'll go to training. I think what we just saw with our second team, we saw bits of from from the first team players that we think Bissouma's the uh, that will play in the first team on Sunday. Um, I think we may be a little ring rusty still in defence, but going forward, I am very, 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 very excited. Very excited. I think attacking wise, we are completely ready. Defensively, hmm, we'll have to wait and see what Mickey Van der Ven. And Romero can strike up right now in training before Sunday. All right, Brian, always a pleasure, my friend. Thanks for coming on, and we shall see you next time. You awesome, will, Brian. and as always, Levy out. <laughs> Big up to Brian Daigle and Lex. Keep it moving, people. Who do we have next? We have Ross. How you doing, Ross? I'm doing great. Are you ready for some Ange Ball? I'm ready for some Ange Ball. Oh. We don't stop. 
No, we don't. Oh my God, that is so much fun to watch. You know, the, oh, I just you know the ball movement. I'm going. Look at this ball movement. We're winning the ball up the pitch. I mean, what is this? What am I watching? What alternate universe am I in now? It's <laughs> it's just. I mean, it's incredible. This was so much fun. So great to, to watch. I mean, it's it's and like you know, as Brian says we were talking about. I mean, it's nice you know to have a second team that can you know our sec. We beat them two one. We beat their starters two one in my opinion. That's what we did. And, uh, you know, it used to be, remember, against the game Nuno does the last comp- 90 minutes, though, Ross. Yes, it does. It does. It does. <laughs> but uh, just like against uh, in Nuno in the Conference League, if you remember that. We, the second team, I, you know, that's what we're used to, you know, watching these guys just struggle and just can't do anything against, you know, comp- Conference League competition. Our second team goes in there against one of the best teams in the world, against most of their starters, and, you know, we hold our own, and, and that's great. I mean, the end wasn't great, and but, uh, you know, hey, it's, it's a friendly, and, and we know what the reasons for that were. So there you go. Yeah, and individually, Ross, who stood out for you? Who who were you really happy with? Uh, like, definitely Basuma. I mean, the sizzle. I mean, that Ooh. guy, uh, yep, that's another name I got for him. Uh, he's great. I mean, just glides around, does those interceptions. Um, and, and, you know, he's the guy that we got. You know, three-man midfield, that's his thing. Two man midfield, he doesn't do so well. Um, let me see who else do we have there? We have Perisic too. I mean, he's he's a winger. You know, that's what he is. He, he's he's not a wing back. He's a winger. He's far more comfortable there. And of course, you know, Ollie Skip. You you you, you got to give it up for Ollie Skip. Those homegrown guys. You know, the, the good old uh, Skip to my uh, Skip to my Lou there. Um, he's. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Hey man, I'm, I'm like expressions. I got all these names for everybody, and uh, um, it, it, but yeah, that header and that first goal was incredible. It's a great to see the homegrown guys. That that's that's what the really is nice to see the homegrown guys coming through and producing because that's that's what you have your academy for. That's the whole point, you know. For so long we haven't had that, and you know he's really really coming good. Ross, looking at today's performance, apart from maybe like Vicario and Basuma, do you think any of the other players maybe earn a spot? For Sunday's uh, Premier League opener, um, not particularly. I don't think. I mean, they may uh, not as a starter. I think they'll be in the squad and you know may come in. You know, I mean, Lo Celso did pretty good, you know, here and there do, doing his thing. Um, but uh, Def, I don't really think much of the defenders. But I mean, big Dav. I mean, Davison uh, redemption arc incoming. <laughs> Dare we say that? You tell uh, me. You tell me, Ross. Is, that, yeah, is he putting um, himself in the shop window? Is he staying, or um, what's happening with Sanchez um, now? I think it's a bit about. See, the, he was always he, the ability was always there with Sanchez. The ability, he's strong, he's fast, he's quick. And I remember when I first started following Spurs seriously, that was uh, Poch's final the, the season he got sacked. And I remember at times I used to say, "Hey, he looks like the only one playing defense out there." The ability's there. It's the consistency, and you know keeping it together and not switching off, you know, that's, that's been his problem. I mean, the ability has always been there. So I think it's a little bit of both. I mean, we don't want to get too excited about it, but it, but it's nice to see, you know, it's nice to see him, you know, putting the effort forth because, you know, he's, he's gotten so much grief, like Brian said, and uh, it's really good to see him, you know, put a nice performance in there. Yeah, I mean, let's um, let's go back to Perisic for a second because you spoke about how well he played today. And at the back end of last season and maybe uh, throughout the summer before preseason started, everyone was ready to get rid of Lo Celso, including my, uh, Perisic and uh, including myself. Do you think during this preseason we've really seen what he can bring to an Ange Postacoglu system and, um, you know, he'll be really vital to stay with us? Yeah, I think so. Definitely. He, he really fits that system on the front foot, being out there on the wing. He doesn't have to worry about defending. You know, he can just go forward, look to put those crosses in, which he does so well. But, you know, he doesn't have to think, oh, now I got to get back. He can just be in there, put those crosses in and uh, use it. And he's an experienced guy. Guy that's won trophies. You need that. Every team needs a guy like that that's experienced, that's been there and can just you know be, set the example for the guys as to how you need to be. And uh, I guess we got to talk about Harry Kane. Apparently, another buy and bid about to come in for about ninety-four point six million pounds. I think it is. How do you envisage that going uh, with the Tottenham hierarchy? That's not meeting the valuation. So for me, if you don't meet the valuation, you don't get him. Simple as that. So just like firmly, uh, how it was. Do you firmly believe on Sunday, Brentford, he's going to be playing? I think so. 
Right now, as of right now, I think so. I think he's going to be in the team. There's really not much, you know, I mean, yes, there's an increased bid. It hasn't met the valuation. We're not hearing anything about, uh, you know, it's just that's the bids there. We're not hearing any other news about what Perry might be thinking or his camp or anything like that. So I really think uh, I think he's going to be in the team. Again, you never know. That's the, that's the whole thing about sport. But uh, I do think he's going to be there. All right. And finally, with the kickoff so soon to the Premier League, like I said, the big game on Sunday against Brentford, are Spurs ready to start the season? I do think so. I mean, it's going to be on the road, tough test, you know, first game, a new manager. But, you know, from what I've seen out of the first team and, you know, some of these second team guys, guys that might play, I think we're ready. I mean, still, there may be some times we get beat over the top a little bit. Hopefully we can limit that. But, you know, that's going to be an adjustment into playing more on the front foot, not on the back foot. Um, but uh, but no, I think uh, Brentford, it's, it's, it's definitely a team we can beat. I think it's a team that we should beat. I think we get All three right. points. Ross, hopefully we get to speak to you again on Sunday after our first three points of the season. But have mm-hmm. a good evening or day, whatever time it is around your end. <laughs> uh, it's day here, but uh, it's always a pleasure, you guys. Come on, you Spurs. Come on, you Spurs. Ange has uh, done some quotes in his press conference today. Just before today. you talk about those Ange quotes, we've actually had an update about a potential, well, it looks like it is going through, about a transfer out of Tottenham. And that is Joe Roden is going to be joining Leeds on a season-long loan. So that's one out of the three centre-backs out. And maybe this leads on to what, what this uh, the this question here is, because he was asked um, about, he said, last week um, you said you want one or two centre-backs in, so still another one to come in that position. He says, yes, potentially. Again, we've got to make sure that we keep the squad manageable and see what happens with outgoings. But yeah, potentially there is another one to come in. Per back. Potentially. It's, I mean, that's that he's the uh, name of the day, isn't he? Per-shows. If it is per shows, I mean, I don't really know much about him. Do you know much about him? I know that um, he's quite good, like, on the ball, playing out the back. He does predominantly play on the right-hand side, but I think can play on both. Um, not like a pacey kind of centre-back, but kind of good centre-back on the ball. I know that for sure. So let's say we do sign him and we go into the new season with him, Romero for the right-hand side, and Van de Ven and Dyer for the left-hand side. I mean, I guess if he can play on the left and Van de Ven does get an injury, then I guess he could play on the left and maybe it won't leave us too short. I think yeah, I've, from what I've seen, he can, I've, he predominantly plays on the right, but I've definitely seen some um, appearances of him on the left as well. So I think he can definitely do both. So look, if this is the guy they've landed on, they, look, they're, they're prepared. It looks like they might be prepared to pay up to £28 million for him. So I don't think they'll um, have that big of an outlay if they didn't think he could be a serious upgrade on what, we're, what we've got currently in centre-back. So, look, if that's where they, at least we're getting another one in, and I'll be happy about that. Mm. Uh, super chat from Danimal Yanandez saying, Tottenham 23-24, PL champions, better 11 than Arsenal. I've never seen people so hyped about a 4-2 friendly loss before. <laughs> Brilliant. Um, he was also asked about, um, Andrew was also asked about uh, Ndombele and Roden tonight. He says, can we read into that that they're not in the plans? He said, no, it's just decisions I've got to make. They're a little bit physically behind the rest as well, you know. The way we play, there's a bit or there's a bit that I need to be strong on and that is that you have, you've got to be at a certain physical level to play this kind of football. If you're not, if you're not it does no justice to play to the player themselves but there's no doubt that we've got a big squad at the moment and there'll be outgoings and those decisions are going to be made by the club and the players themselves tonight was about getting minutes into the lads that I felt we needed to be ready come Sunday so after after hearing those quotes and hearing Joe Roden's basically out the door Mm -hmm. do you feel like Tanky and Don is going to follow him very soon yeah I think that's pretty certain at this point it looks very, very likely. As long as you know they find buyers and stuff like and that. And how do you feel about that? Do we need a do we need a, um, open a therapy session? Look, if I just made that decision, I'm going to unback it. I think. Look, I, I still think um, with a player like like Tongi, um, I would give him every opportunity. But as he says, we've got like, we've got a bloated squad, um, and the reality is not everyone can stay, and he's got to make tough decisions. And if one of them's Tongi, so be it. Uh-huh. I think Lo Celso wasn't expected to be a part of the plans this season. He's come out of nowhere. So all of a sudden, that's another spot taken up all of a sudden. So 
it makes sense. And he's, you... had, he's had a say on Van de Ven as well. He said, Mickey Van de Ven, we've been on for for a while. A great profile for a centre back, particularly for the way we want to play. Physically, he's quite commanding, and he's a real. He's got a real presence about him. He's a left-sided centre back, which really helps in the structure of the team. Really ambitious young man. He's only had a year in the Bundesliga. He was at Voldendam before that. It's not like he was at a big club before that. He's making big strides, and, and hopefully this jump is another one which uh, which we see him really develop. For us, he's one that just for this year, but for the long term, that we felt can become really important part of our team and will be a really excellent defender for us. All right, big up, Mickey van de Ven. Let's go on. Oh, just before we got a super chat from Brandon Troller saying, Davinson Maldini on a redemption arc of Sagittarian's proportions. Run to the hills, alert the cows and flamingos alike, for he shall lead us to salvation. Bloody hell. <laughs> <laughs> oh, only Brandon. Poetic. Love that, Brandon. But let's move on to our next guest and he goes by the name of Mikey. How are you yes, doing, Mikey? That is my... You guys didn't fancy a trip to Barcelona tonight, then? I did fancy a trip. We just couldn't make it happen for one reason or another. Uh, did you not fancy a trip to Barcelona, my friend? Uh, well, I've been trying to scour tickets for the Man United game. I had my, I had my uh, priorities in order. I still haven't right. found one, but we move. I mean, look, <clears throat> that was... Uh, that was very... I've watched a few preview shows of how some football like experts think teams are going to play, and we played exactly how the experts said, amazing attack in football, but we're going to have to score two, three, four goals in order to beat the opposition because of how um, leaky our defence could become with one or two long-felt injuries. So that's kind of presented itself today, unfortunately. Ha how much better does that get for you if we do bring in another defender before now until the end of the window? And if you have our first choice defence as well, I mean, I know you say injuries, but, you know, Emerson on the right, Doggy on the left, Van der Ven and um, Romero, and then with maybe a Persher's backing the centre-backs up. Is that still a worry for you? Yeah, partly because, well, I mean, I, I know Persher's came through the Ajax Academy and was supposed to be good, and then he went to the Italian League. I don't remember which team. I know he was supposed to be good and wasn't very good. I had a few Dutch Spurs fans in a group chat. I'm mean, saying that Persher's wouldn't be the answer to our problems. Apparently, it would only add to them. So we'll, we'll see we'll see what happens there. Obviously, they have watched more Eredivisie action than I have. But I, I don't think we can truly be at ease, right? <clears throat> I know we have a certain homegrown quota to fill and Dai is going to stay this year and try and prove himself and leave on a free next year if he doesn't manage to prove himself. But I think of those, like, of those... So Van der Ven and Romero are, like, as we as we, as we we live and breathe, they're going to be our centre-back partnership. And you've got Dyer, Sanchez, Tanganga, and as of right now, Joe Roden. If, if either... If any single one of those players has the potential to come on and be a substitute or a, a regular starter in the face of injuries, that is still not good. Because as we saw today, Eric Dyer, he was... Davis Sanchez's awareness let him down for the first goal, I think. But then he was near faultless afterwards. Eric Dyer was Eric Dyer. And he's the one that's going to be staying. Of all the, of all the four second-string centre-backs I've named, Roden alone, Sanchez is all but already looks like being signed if we can find someone. We've already had one person come in for him just to show it was a Russian club. I don't blame him for turning them down. Uh, and then Tanganga looks like he's being, uh, there's apparently interest in him from Italy and, and other quarters. So if Dyer is the one that stays, I'm not, I'm, I'm not happy with that because he, 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 as a sign of our ambition as a club, if he stays, he will only stink up the club even more with the midness, as I like to call it. So, hmm. Yeah, I mean, I've, I've, I saw reports today that we've been linked with a move for James Ward-Prowse if Ndombele leaves. So, How do um, you feel about that? I mean, he's a damn sight better than Ndombele, but James Ward-Prowse, is, he's not a one-trick pony. He's a very good player in his own right. You don't rack up 400 appearances for Southampton without doing something right. But, you know, we brought in James Madison for a set-piece taker and to bring in James Ward-Prowse, it seems a little bit limiting, but he's a damn sight better than Tangi, in my humble opinion, for the way Ange might want to play. That's well, we're talking about players who've been cast aside and now back in the frame in Giovanni Lo Celso. Do you oh, expect him? You expect him to play a big part now this season for us? 
I expect him to play a big part until Ben Tanker returns. And when Ben Tanker returns, I see him as being Madison's understudy on that attacking midfield slot because he was very much a forward-thinking player today. I see, you know, Lo Celso, and if he stays, Hoybier and Skip and Saar, you know, Madison and Basuma look like they've got two midfield spots on them because Basuma was the best player on the pitch tonight. He was absolutely sensational. Every time I watched him, you know, he dribbled out. He won us that free kick on the edge of the box with his close control dribbling. This is the Basuma we saw at Brighton. Uh, and it's no coincidence that everything went wrong as soon as he came off the pitch. Like, genuinely, I was on call with my girlfriend at the time and I was saying, I'm in tears at how attacking this football is. Because the pressure, the intensity, and it was only when Basuma came off that we saw how much we are going to miss his presence if he mm. doesn't play. So Bissouma, Bentancur, and Madison would be my preferred midfield three. But then you've got Hoybier if he leaves. You've then got Skip, who I thought was, again, he scored two goals against Barcelona. <laughs> I mean, Oliver Skip scored two goals against Barcelona. Would you hear that under Conte or anyone else? Absolutely not. That's Costa Coglu for you. That's Angel. And um, I'm very positive if we can just sort out that defence, Regulon and Dyer and... Poro is not a right back, as Brian Daigle said. Emerson has to start for us, and that's a damn thing I never thought I'd say 12 months ago, but here we are. <laughs> um, I mean, Mike, Mikey, with the, with the season so close now, do you think that the starting 11 is set in stone for Sunday? And if so, what, what do you think it is? I think it picks itself. I think uh, Vicario obviously starts. It's I am very... Uh, trying to think of a correct way to peeved off at Brentford relenting on the Raya pursuit for Arsenal but not for us they wanted 40 yeah. mil give or take and we were, we were offering 20, 25 30. it looks like he's going to bloody Arsenal for half the price that Brentford were quoting us and I'm yet to see Vicario truly establish himself but Premier League proven great distribution, top 5 keepers in the league last year it's just I don't get it, but Vicario in goal, Emerson at right back, Van de Ven and Romero as the centre backs. Yudoji at left back for me. When he's fit, Bissouma, Bentenko, Madison. But as of the Brentford game, probably Bissouma, uh, Lo Celso slash Skip and Madison. It'll probably be. I mean, he scored two, but it might be Skip, but probably Madison and um, and Lo Celso, and then Kulisevsky, Son, and. Uh, uh, striker i don't know who it'll be if it came harry again, kane just say it mikey say it with chest it's gonna be harry kane kane set is kane has set his future deadline by saturday night and Bayern are launching a 95 million pound offer so we'll see who relents daniel do you levy think that gets or... accepted no i don't daniel <laughs> levy daniel levy remains quote he said 100 million base fee plus add-ons that's what's always been quoted and they're offering 95 million including add-ons and they're not it seems to me that Bayern don't don't have the facilities or the cash to offer the money that Levy wants Kane will stay if Angeball does well maybe he signs that new deal if not well we'll be waiting for the news on we'll be waiting for the we are Tottenham TV videos it's breaking news Harry Kane agrees to a bumper new deal but until don't that worry, we'll happens, bring it to you here first you know that Mikey yeah. Well, until until Saturday night, until I'm confident that I'll wake up on Sunday morning, until I see news on Sunday morning confirming that Harry Kane is staying, I'm still I'm still fifty fifty on it because I'm still of the opinion that if you if you if Daniel Levy does accept that offer, that that financial incentive is, is good and that'll obviously give us money to spend. But if he stays, I was there at the five one. I saw what he can do. I was reminded of his quality. It didn't help the fact that I kind of set my mind on if he leaves, I'm happy. He does. He goes and does that in, you know, we say quite possibly his final home game uh, at Tottenham. But if, if, if he does, then I've just been reminded of his quality and how shit we're going to be if he leaves. I was on one side and after finally seeing the light, I can switch back the other way. And yeah, but... Honestly, the, the football tonight almost made me cry. <laughs> 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 I love that, mate. If that's going to make you cry, wait till you're wearing full swig, Angeball. You just wait. 
I I went I started going to full full match goers um identity last year, went to seven or eight games when Conte slash Mason slash Stellini slash the kit man was in charge and now I've come back and prices have gone up at the time when more people want to go to the game and that's well that's Daniel Lee before you isn't it? That is Daniel Exactly. Exactly. But well, Mikey, thank you yes. so much for coming on today, my friend. And uh, we'll see you yeah, next you're... time and throughout the season. Yeah, yeah, in a bit, guys. Cheers, mate. All right. Well, we have got another guest coming on now. And I'm sure it could be some fireworks going off now because we've got George from Bayern now. Uh, he put in the chat saying, um, how do I get on the call? He wanted to talk about Harry Kane, I'm guessing. So we got George on from Bayern now. How are you doing, George? Oh, he's... Are you on mute, George? Give me a sec. Yeah, you might. Are we good now? Are we good yeah, now? Yeah, we're, we're good. Go. We're, we're good. Perfect. How are you doing, my friend? Yeah, good. There's no echo, right? No, no, it's all good. Nah, look, I didn't know Daniel Levy was was gay. And <laughs> this man has my club by the balls, man. He's grabbing these balls. <laughs> 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 you didn't know oh. about his game. You didn't know. You didn't know about it. You weren't nah, familiar with his game. Me, man, <laughs> this guy has every, every one of my clubs sweating. Look, look, I'm prepared to do whatever I got to do to get Kane out of Spurs. Like I'm ready. <laughs> <laughs> I'm ready. I'm ready. Look, nah, your club is crazy, dude. Daniel Levy. This, nah, look, I'm also a human rights activist. Um, not only do I make content on Bayern Munich, I'm a human rights activist, and I'm here to advocate for Harry Kane's freedom. Um, <laughs> I, that's really what I'm here for. This man really said 100, 120 million pounds, and bro, he is not he has not changed one bit. He hasn't deviated at all. Like, what do you think, as Bayern fans, <laughs> we're supposed to think? Like, do we really think we're, we're about to spend 120 million pounds on Kane? George, George, what, can I ask you something? L looking at the um, from a, from a buying perspective, and you see when you see like, have you seen like Florian Plettenberg like begging on Sky Germany for Daniel Levy to accept the offer? Are you like embarrassed by that, or is that, or are you like, yeah, go on? Nah, nah, Levy, nah. Man. We we gotta get this Kane deal over the line any means necessary. This guy has to come here. <laughs> Well, I, look, if I have to get on my knees and do magic to Daniel Levy, I, I'll have to do the, I have to do what I gotta do. Like this, this is absolutely important to me. I, I see this Kane deal as critical to our season. We're, wow! See, look, Spurs are helping us out here because we could end up with Niklas Fulkrug. You guys don't know who that is, but he's a player at Werder <laughs> Bremen, and he needs a dentist before he needs a move to Bayern. That man's teeth are. I can't. There's he no scores a lot of do. goals, though, George. He scores a lot of goals. I mean, maybe he'll get as many as uh, true promoting. Oh, man. <laughs> uh, can I swear on here? Sure. If you want. It's, it's after hours here in London. Nah, nah. You know, I won't do that because <laughs> there's things I want to say. So is there a chance that Daniel Levy changes his mind a little bit? Like, what could Bayern do? George, George, George. If if you you pay up, up. Pay up, George. Pay the money. If you know, if us uh, Spurs fans have been very used to Daniel Levy for 23 years, one thing we all know for sure is he is the most stubborn man in football. He will not change his mind for anything when it comes to a transfer fee. So it's basically, oh, you need oh, the oh. fee or that is it pretty much. Oh, damn. Well, first of all, you're saying pay up, pay up like we're PSG, Man City. We don't have any oil. The only oil in Germany would be olive oil or I don't know. It's it's insane. Look, here, here's how I see this. Kane is 30 years old. He has a year left in his contract. How can this man be this this unreasonable? I, I honestly... <laughs> That's Levy. <laughs> no, okay. Is, is that... Don't Spurs fans feel a certain kind of way? Because his stubbornness is good in, in situations like this where you're trying to squeeze money out of us. Like, I really, like, it's great. I feel like, I don't want to bring it up here, but it might be revenge against Germans because Le Levy's family, you know what I'm saying? So it might be the revenge. It might be the revenge you take. And look, I got no problem. I love my Jewish people, but it's revenge. Revenge. So... 
so the, the question I have is, is, isn't that like a, a negative and a positive for Spurs fans? Because he's never going to take the risk that you need to move forward as a club and actually start winning things. Let, let, let me tell you this, George. The more dirty tactics that Bayern try with getting the former president of Bayern to come out and talk about him, get hierarchy, people in the German hierarchy, the manager, everyone. You can get anyone to come out and talk and use these dirty tactics to try and pressure Daniel Levy into selling. But the more you do that, the less way it is that Daniel Levy is going to sell. So every time you probably try on these tactics, adds an extra five million on. George, one thing you have to understand, that, well, I have to understand, Daniel Levy, he thrives off winning the negotiation. That's what, how he, that's what he lives for. So if, he, if there's anything you're trying to do to try and get one up on him, he's not going to bat an eye. That deadline on Friday, every Tottenham fan looked at that deadline and said, Levy will take no notice. And he won't even consider that deadline. And what did he do? He went on holiday and didn't even answer until Monday. Exactly. That is what Daniel <laughs> Levy's like. Exactly. Exactly. He heard a deadline. He's like, all right, where's the, when's the next flight to Miami? All right, I'm getting on that. You're moving yeah, around no. like we're Borussia Dortmund and, they, and that you can bully Daniel Levy. You can't do that, my friend. Well, I mean, first of all, we never bully Dortmund. Um, I feel no, like just they, take their player every year. I, well, okay, name the most <laughs> recent Dortmund player that played for Bayern in the, that we brought in. You just, in you, you just took Guerrero this summer. Yeah, he was free, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> 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 but look, I, I'll admit like, it was a boss move for Levy to book a fly. You know damn well he saw the offer from offer from Byron, and maybe there was a deadline. I don't know. And he said, "Nah, I'm I'm heading to Miami." I got. He, he really did that, and the, the <laughs> level of pettiness there, I, I can respect because I want that level. This whole time, my whole life, I thought Donald Trump wrote the art of the deal, but it might be Daniel Levy this whole time. He really understands power moves. And look, this might not go go well here because there's a bunch of Spurs fans. I feel surrounded. It's like a gangbang. <laughs> it might not go well here. But I feel like Daniel Levy must have been bullied in school. Like that, that's <laughs> 100%. Oh, hear me out. Hear me out. Hear me out. I'm not joking, by the way. This is genuinely how I feel. I feel like because he was bullied at school and he never felt powerful, his, his adult life was just him finding ways – to always have the upper hand. Are you vaping while I'm talking? Nah, come on, man. <laughs> this is my show, George. Nah, you, you're you vaping? Oh, my. Okay, that's worse he, than what, what Levy's doing to us. <laughs> <laughs> He's pulling a Levy on you. I'm pulling a Levy on your ass. Oh, yeah, well, so I think he was bullied in the pool. Okay, uh, anyways, like, what do you, what's your opinion on this entire transfer? Do you think Kane stays or leaves? I'm actually curious. Well, look, I've been changing my opinion on this hour by hour as news filters through, honestly. It's, it's, I've been toing and throwing. I think at this point, it's gotten so close to... I think, look, Kane made his stance clear. If he's here come the start of the season then he's going to be here for the year. Now, that's only five days away at this point. So Bayern really got to get a move on. And there seems to be a big va valuation gap still between the clubs. And Bayern, uh, apparently their latest bid is going to be 94 million um, in um, with add-ons included. And I don't think that's going to be accepted by Tottenham. I don't think that gets near the valuation. So at this point, I think it's definitely more likely, from my point of view, that Kane stays. Now... Look, things change very quickly in football. Bayern could get their uh, get, get, get their act together and stump up the money. That's, that will satisfy Levy. But if they haven't done it or by this point, I find it hard to believe they're going to do it. Okay, what about your y'all are twins, brothers, brothers? brothers. <laughs> oh, that's why you do look alike. I was like, damn, <laughs> they're not identical twins, but they could be twins. What about you? Yeah, I, I kind of think similar. I mean, I've been of the thinking that Bayern are going to sign Kane for the last month or so, but now we're here with five days to go. Bayern still putting in bids under the valuation. I do kind of think this bid will get rejected. I think if you come back for one more, I think it could potentially meet the valuation, but I think this bid will get rejected. So the facts of the matter is, if you want Harry Kane, you're going to need to meet Daniel Levy's um, valuation, and that's the end of it. What did you expect to get him for? What kind of price? Well, I mean, I, I honestly thought 100, all right, you guys are going to laugh again, but I thought the 100 million euros was fair, plus add-ons. I genuinely thought that was getting accepted because isn't, I mean, Joe Lewis is in prison. He needs bail money. So any payment is, <laughs> he's still in jail or did he, did, did he bail out? 
I think he bailed out, He's but not I'm not in 100% jail. Yeah, sure. He, yeah, he paid a $300 million bail. Wait, this is in the US? Yeah. Yeah, I love my country. Yeah, lock him up. <laughs> <laughs> well, look, he, it, I read a story that Joe Lewis said to Levy, hey, I, I can't lose Kane for free. Because is that worse than having a... Trust see, me, that story always... is rubbish. That story is bullshit because Joe Lewis hasn't been involved in footballing affairs for many, ever, I don't think, or for many years. So the the, the idea that Joe Lewis will some, somehow come out of the woodworks and start demanding things from the footballing side is fantasy, in my opinion. Oh, so is he not the majority owner in Spurs? He is. He was. He was. I think he still has control, but he's not. He doesn't care. He lets Levy run the footballing side. He doesn't get involved in that. He never has. And I don't think he's going to start now. Okay. Well, if Spurs were to sell Kane, and I guess none, none of you think it's going to happen if we don't pay the exact amount that Dan. I, I mean, not a penny less, George. Not one penny less. Nah, you know, I guarantee you this if Kane comes to Bayern, it won't be exactly what you said it might be like a few million off all right so because I, I think we're gonna try to get something out of it but you're still not we, familiar with daniel levy's game george you're not learning can i tell so you a story really... george about daniel levy? <laughs> can i tell you a story just to let you know the kind of man you're dealing with i'm trying to remember what some what the signing was i think it was um oh uh, i think it was when mead uh, no, brad friedel i think you're talking about the shirts yeah who yeah was brad friedel uh, it was brad friedel signed for tottenham right on a on a on a free transfer and uh, when he was at the training ground or to sign, to sign um, for Spurs, he, um, he saw uh, one of the shirts and he asked, can I have one of these for like one of my kids? And Daniel Lee was like, yeah, 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 take one. And when he got his first pay packet, he deducted the price of that football shirt from his first pay packet. That is, the, that is, what, <laughs> that is what you're dealing with here. <laughs> oh my God. Nah. I told you he got bullied in school. He didn't even understand the, the dynamic of just doing something nice. All right, look. So who would replace Kane if he did leave and we paid the exact amount of money that Levy wanted? Who for Spurs? I think uh, Richarlison will probably get the shirt start uh, first nah, and foremost. And maybe a gift or ban will come in uh, to play back Why do you think him? we're so desperate to keep him, George? Well, I, well, because there's no option. Richarlison... I think he actually genuinely scored more goals at the World Cup than he did for Spurs the entire he, entire he did. That's he correct. Did. That is correct. <laughs> how many how many uh prem goals did he score? One. Nah, you're you're joking. He got he got he got um booked twice for taking hey, a hey, shot hey. off one scoring He's and they're both offside. I'm being serious. He scored one goal for seventy <laughs> mil? Yeah, talk about Daniel Levy masterclass dealing. He he spent seventy million on that bum Richarlison. All right, cool. Wait, so who's Gift Orban? He's a striker from Ghent in Belgium who just scores a ridiculous amount of goals. Young player coming through now. Yeah, I mean, I can see why Spurs are desperate to keep Kane because really the striker market is just Osimhen who is overpriced and also apart from pace and power, I don't see anything he's better at Kane at doing. I think Kane is a better footballer overall. That's why he would fit our team so well. Uh, this guy could tell me I'm playing number 10 tomorrow and I wouldn't really question him. I, yeah. I see these passes. I watch a lot of Spurs games. He, he could literally be the Bruyne. The, be the Bruyne. Mm, he's, yeah. he's, he's so complete. So, yeah, I know my time's limited. I see the Spurs fans in the studio. They're just they're like, nah, get this Bayern fan out of here. <laughs> George, let me ask you a, a, little, a final question then. I want to know from a Bayern fan point of view, if you don't get uh, Kane this summer and he stays at Tottenham, do you have hope that he could, he would come to you on a free or do you think it's now or never? I wouldn't want him on a free because I'm just hoping there's a new name that pops up. Here's the thing. He's going to be 31 when we're getting him for free. At least now he's 30 and... Yeah, I, look, I you think You just had Lewandowski else... banging in goals at 34. Like, like you know about uh, strikers can last. Yeah, I know strikers are lasting more. Uh, sports medicine is innovating every day. And, there, you know, even if you got an injury, there's way, ways to, you know, bring him back. Like Marvel does with movie characters. So, <laughs> I just, uh, yeah, I think there's a chance we can get him for free. But Kane's the kind of guy to just sign a new contract. Like... That mm -hmm. man really gave us a deadline. He said, I'm staying here. Like, that's the opposite of pushing for a move. He did the same <laughs> thing with Man City. Seriously, he did the same thing with Man City. He could have been at City. And I kind of blame Kane 
for us not poaching Holland. See, we could have had Holland. Instead, we're signing Dortmund players like Guerrero. So, look, Kane was supposed to go to City, and he didn't really push for it. And Holland would have gone to Bayern. But Kane ended up just staying at Tottenham. So I would not be surprised if during the season, you know, maybe Pasta Koglu does something different. You know, maybe you guys start all of a sudden playing to win things, which I don't believe will happen in my lifetime. I believe I will die and Spurs will never win a trophy. I'm sorry to disappoint everyone in here, but as long as Daniel Levy is as stubborn as he is, he will never take the necessary risk to back managers. Um, you guys really had some of the most successful managers in the world come in for two, well, it was two, two consecutively. Yeah, it was. Conte uh, Mourinho, yeah. Yeah, it was like getting LeBron and, and Jordan and winning nothing. Like these guys are known <laughs> for winning and you guys didn't really do anything. So, and something annoys me about Kane, and I think Spurs fans should be annoyed by it. I think players like Kane, like Hugman's son, for example, when he was really like cooking, this man was cooking like Gordon Ramsay in, in those few seasons where he was getting top scorer, getting like, all these crazy goals, great, great performances. Like, was it not weird that he didn't, he wasn't really like linked to a move out and they just decide to stay at Spurs, make their money and never win? Kane himself, this man had an opportunity to go away to Champions League at City because that's what that's what would have happened if he went there. Instead, he just stayed at Spurs trying to break Schur's record. I, I think there needs to be like more ambition from a Spurs perspective with each individual player. Like it sh Kane should be like, I'm trying to go because it's going to show the fan base that he's ambitious. And then if he does stay, then you're going to know he really wants to win and it might push the club to make better sporting decisions. But that's just my opinion. So, Look, George, the fact of the matter is, two years ago, he did try and um, force a move to City, but City never stumped up the money. They bid a hundred million and met Jack Relish's uh, release clause, and they didn't even meet that for Harry Kane. They bid what was it, eighty million or something for Harry Kane two years ago? That was never going to be accepted. If if Man City would have bid what Daniel Levy wanted that summer, he would have gone. Yeah, but then Kane just stayed. It's it's just what can bizarre. he do? What can he do? Ah, he could do what Lewandowski did for us. This man went on an interview tour and acted like we were his ex-wife or something. Like, he acted <laughs> like he didn't know what. He said, I don't know a single player that would play for Bayern. Bayern's a small – he called us every word in the book. Like, I really felt like we were a Spurs – we were Spurs in that <laughs> summer. He really called us a small club. But let me stop bantering. I appreciate you boys having me. There's another dude in here named George. And there's another dude named Keep Parasic. Don't bring Keep Parasic on because Parasic is a grandfather. I don't know why you're trying to bring him on. Uh, bring George <laughs> on. Bring George on to just continue the, th the trend. But I, I really appreciate We Are Tottenham TV. I just found you guys a week ago. And now I'm a member uh, because I'm a regular <laughs> guest on, on here now, like bantering you and all that. But I appreciate it. No, we welcome we welcome you on we welcome you on and maybe when um when the Kane saga is signed sealed and delivered either way we'll get to speak again how about this whenever Kane yeah, yeah, scores yeah. on a weekend you have to call in how about that I'm, I'm gonna start doing <laughs> math reactions every game Tottenham loses I already did the one part <laughs> no, I'm not kidding I, I'm working I'm working overtime to complete this deal with this club uh I I did a video no trophy for Kane again where I obviously banked in Spurs you know, we're, you're losing to a club we own, Barcelona. So, you know, it is what it is. I appreciate you guys. Uh, I'm out now. Big up, Cheers. George. Thanks for coming cool on, in, my friend. Yeah, bye. Thanks, George. That was a good call. Cool. That was a funny call, cool man. That was a <laughs> funny guy, funny guy. But from one George to the next, let's bring on Tottenham George this time. George, how we doing, my friend? Oh, he's on mute. Then I was. Sorry, can you just repeat that? I was going to have said that he was far more entertaining than I've ever been, I think. Oh, no well. chance, no chance. You're very entertaining, George. Very entertaining. But talk to me. Um, well, since we've had that whole Harry Kane chat, we may as well start with Harry Kane. Um, new bid apparently is coming in either tonight or tomorrow. 94 and a half million, I think it was. Do you think that bid's getting accepted? Um, is it getting accepted? I think it may well do. Um, really? Unfortunately, I think it's yeah. I think it's coming to the end of the week. They they're aware of what Harry Kane has said, and that if he plays the first game, 
then we're looking forward to, to keeping him for another season. I think that he's, um, I think it's going to be accepted. I think it's sensible from a business perspective to, to, to take it. Um, at the end of the day, Harry's going to go for free at the end of this season. I think we've all got to just come to terms with that. Um, and uh, I mean, I'd be very disappointed, obviously, to see him go. But um, unfortunately, we, we haven't matched those expectations and he's he needs to win something. And uh, unfortunately, I, I just can't see him doing it this season at, at Spurs. Um, I just, I'm, sure, uh, I'm sure when he was growing up, he dreamed of winning the Bundesliga. <laughs> Yeah, I know what you I know what you say. It's it's a strange choice, but yeah. I think you were saying um, uh, sort of a month ago or two months ago, Ben, that we would rather see him go to Bayern Munich than to yeah. Manchester United or 100%. potentially potentially even a Chelsea now. Um, yeah. So it, it's. It, look, it's going to be a very, very difficult thing to, to see happen. Um, I think probably even more than, than Gareth Bale when he left. But um, I just can't see this ending any other way. I think if we keep, if we do keep him for one more season, um, uh, he'll be the consummate professional. He'll do what he can. But I just, uh, I still think that um, Ange Ball in its infancy is not going to be um it is not going to be adequately equipped for us to win a trophy this season i hope i'm wrong and, and we sneak in an fa cup or a carabao cup or an anything cup um but you know it, it, I, I just think at the moment it's it's just too much in its infancy to be um prolific enough to win a, a, a substantial competition well it might be not not now but mate could is it not like based on what you've been seeing in pre-season i know it's very early days but are you excited uh, by what by you know the kind of football we've been playing in preseason? And if we can you know really perfect that, is that not something maybe Kane could get behind? Yeah, I mean, look, I I can't see that defense holding up with with that method of play. Um, I you know we conceded four today. Um, yes, it, it's. It's a friendly, yes, it's um, um, the, the the circumstances is that we were, you know, we were exhausted by the end of the game. But I could see, I can see gaps in that, in, in that way of playing and in that formation that I think would be very easily exploited um, in the Premier League. And that's what I'm mostly concerned about. I think with, I think it, it you know, we saw today we were getting, you know, again, caught on. Listen, it, it's it's going to be a different story if Kuti Romero's there. But um, with bringing in the new centre-backs, we just don't know if they're going to potentially take to the Premier Premier League immediately or, or, or to Ange Board or to any of those things. So I, I just, I can see us sh shipping a lot of goals before this gets um, any better. Um, uh, the, the, the game against West Ham, I think, just showed that we can dominate and still concede. Um, and again, today showed me exactly the same thing. Um, you know, we, we, we've also conceded silly goals against the, the Singaporean side. Um, so, I'm, you know, I, the, it's exciting stuff, but I think ultimately this season, hopefully Ange gets the... Gets the um, gets the, the opportunity to to nurture this into next season. Um, but I, I do see us shipping a lot of goals. And I'm not sure if we're going to be able to meet Champions League next season. Um, so we, we're we going to be faced with a little bit of a damn double whammy here in the, the league position. is not going to lend itself well to bringing in um, high-profile um, uh, players that's going to be able to, to bring that level up easily so we're, we're going to be reliant again on on trying to you know pick up somewhere a, a Luke Modric who's kind of playing in a, in a league who's who's unknown and comes good um, I, I do see kind of see this as being back to you know to the initial days of, uh, of potentially um, Harry Redknapp um, not even really Poch 
So, you know, uh, I've got my reservations, I'll be honest. Um, the, yeah, the football looks much better. I can see a lot of entertainment, but um, I can't. I just can't see us breaking into into the top four. When you look at the is it three or four games that we've played in pre-season so far, who's really exciting you coming into the season? I'd be suing my by by a mile. Um, he's you know t- today he was absolutely consummate. If it wasn't for him, I think we would have um, conceded far earlier. Um, he was breaking up that play. He was putting together those those passes. Um, some of the football that we played going up the field was was scintillating. Um, but I think when you then look at what happened after, so we we take off players, we bring on Alfred Devine, we bring on Jed Spence, we bring on Scarlett, and we we looked like a, a team which was a little bit impotent at that point. Whereas Barcelona will bring on their players and they look like a different sort of team inspired to, to, to win a game that they had really lost control over. Um, so I think that that's the other difference here, that, that our you know, youngsters that we're going to be bringing on are just not, uh, at the moment, going to cut the mustard. Um, in, you, you, look, but George, still- you, sorry, sorry, George, but you say that, but you look at some of the players that were playing today. Jed Spence, apparently he's on the transfer list. Uh, Dane Scarlett, I mean, he's apparently, him and Devine are apparently going to be loaned out uh, this season. And you're looking at players like Sergio Regulon, who potentially might not be here next year or so, and Davinson Sanchez as well, who actually had a really good game today. But a lot of the players actually in this squad today might not even be here for this coming season. I, I agree. Um, it's just that the, we are then being reliant on the new players coming in. So we're still talking about Clement Longley potentially coming in as a centre back. Um, so I, I, I agree I, I do agree with you that, that a lot of those players won't be there. And yeah, look, Sanchez had a fantastic, you know, game today, but he's had those types of games before. And it, it is the element of consistency here that we need yeah. to be looking at. And if Correct. if you're gonna be if you're gonna contend for for for, for cups and for, for honors, you you know you, you need to have players that are going to be putting in consistent performances. So I don't, I mean, look, I'm putting in a dampener on things at the moment. Oh, oh is he gone? Well, George, uh, I'm not sure what happened there, but I think you lost connection. If you can reconnect, then um, we'll get you on. We'll wait a couple of minutes um, and see if you do reconnect. Is he reconnecting? He's frozen completely. All right, let's uh, move on and see if we can get him back a bit. Later. All right, sorry about that, George, but uh, we'll get you back on if you do reconnect. But let's go on to our next guest. Something inside so strong. Oh, no. Let's bring on Barry. Oh. There's something inside so strong, boys. Yeah, something inside so strong that we conceded four goals today. What happened, Barry, on the pitch today? Oh, mate, no, no, we're, let's not. I'm not going negative. Let's not go Aaron, Aaron Downer, mate. Come on. We we absolutely bossed Barcelona for 70 minutes with our B team. And, uh, you know, I think we just need to, we just need to look at the positives. We've not seen football like that since since forever. I don't when, when was the last time we saw us playing football like that? Tiki Taka out from the back. One, two touch football in the middle of the field. Players that were nowhere. And I, I just look, I think there's just far more positives. There's hardly any players in that team that are going to be starting on Sunday. And come on, boys, we've got to be excited, surely. Yeah, I'm I'm very excited for the new season. And uh, it's not just this game in pre-season. I think every game that we've played so far has had an element of excitement. And um, Ange Ball has been a breath of fresh air, let's be honest. But are you not worried at all um, with how easy it looks to open us up? Yeah, look, I think we're gonna we're gonna have a tough, tough first two or three months of the season. I think going forward, um, you know, I think I think we, we we look electric going forward, and just at the back, it's gonna be it's gonna be interesting. I don't, I'm not sure Van der Ven starts against Brentford, but hey, Ange might surprise us and stick him in there. But the the, the, the my boy Emerson's gonna be back on Sunday. You know that we all know that he's gonna be there starting right back all season. So. 
look, I, I think I think look, we've got a lot to be we we got a lot to be positive about. I think yeah, Sunday again, I, I was there. I, I saw that ball over the top. It's worrying, but um, look, I think it's going to be exciting. It's going to be a roller coaster, and I think we need to just get on board with Ange and just be positive. Um, yeah, we haven't had the best preseason. You, you could tell that obviously after Sunday's game and, and today's game, the players that that played on Sunday and obviously played uh, played tonight. There, you know, we're lacking match fitness. We're lacking time in those legs. Um, and 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 look, it's it's going to be a tough game going going to Brentford. But I, I'm just I just think we just got to be positive and and, and look at the positives. I, I mean, Vicario. I think probably could have done better for that first one, but the other three, I'm not, I'm not too sure about. And the last um, one, the last one was terrible from Vicario, in my opinion. Yeah, but he was never going to say think? it. I mean, he was standing on the, the complete other side of the goal. I mean, what's he doing? That positioning was terrible. I mean, yeah. I mean, look, he. I, I'm not. I'm not going to go in on Vicario just yet. Um, look, we conceded 46 goals with Hugo in his first season. So let's just see how many, I mean, we might concede 46 goals by January if we carry on playing the way we've been playing. But <laughs> um, look, I, I think, I think for me, look, I think we just need to be positive. Look, Dyer, I, I mean, I'm not sure what he was doing for, for a couple of those goals. Um, was that, was that, was that third goal offside or was that me just, it looked like the the player was in front when he played it or, I mean, I don't know what the offside rule is anymore. You, you, you're, talking about, you're talking about the uh, the equaliser. The equaliser, yeah. Yeah, I, I think that was uh, onside. I, I saw another angle of it. Okay. He, I don't think he was in front. But why is Dyer that that fourth one? Was it the fourth one? He was just he just just let let him go past yeah. him. Why didn't he just yeah. take him out? Take a yellow card. Take a red card. It's not going to make any difference, right? I mean, he's not going to be playing so. Even if it did make a difference, you just surely you just cut, you just clatter the player. That's what we saw in that first half, right? And we saw it on Sunday with Kulu, uh, Perisic come running in all over the pitch, taking players out. Basuma just you know flying into tackles. Skippy the same. Um, but we just yeah, I just think we just lost that that bit in the second half when um, you know when when Basuma came off and when Skip came off, we we lost that bit of uh, bounce in that midfield. But look, I, I'm also a little bit unshocked at why. Spence was playing on that right wing, um, but he didn't look he didn't look interested to me, if I'm honest. But hey, it is what it is with Spence. I, I, look, Perisic was a fantastic. Basuma, I think, will start on Sunday after that performance. Um, hopefully, he hasn't got a knock because he was looked like he was limping when he came off. But look, loads of positives. Surely, surely you're excited, uh, Ben, to be there on Sunday. I can't wait to get back to going to Spurs. I really can't wait. But Barry, I wanted to ask you a question. I know you're a man who likes to back the underdog, right? Um, so Davinson Sanchez, after that performance today, what are you thinking? Sticking around for this season? Well, I'm just waiting for the call from the Saudis to come and bid 60 million for him. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> that's that's what we're hoping, right? That's what we're hoping. The Saudis get on the phone. They go, uh, Daniel, uh, we saw Davinson yesterday. Uh, I don't know. We, we haven't really been on our radar and uh, and uh, we want to drop 60 million. Do you accept it? it we, we're, biting, we're biting your hand off. I'll drive, I'll drive him to Saudi tomorrow. It's not a problem. <laughs> but look, Davinson Sanchez, he has, look, he, he, he's emptying Lewandowski out of his pocket tonight. Um, he was, look, he was, he was great, but he, he doesn't show that consistency enough. I mean, look, we saw what was happening with with Emerson when Poro or the rumours of Poro coming. He, he stepped up his game. Um, look, if if I, I, I still don't think he's good enough, old Big Dave. But look, if if he's going to stay, I'd rather he stayed over Dyer. Um, but you know, I just I just can't see it. We need to we need to get both of them up. Um, I don't think we're going to see if they do stay. I don't think we're going to see much of either of them this season. Obviously, with Romero and, uh, and Mickey van der Ven, which which I'm hoping is going to be, you know, Jan and Toby vibes in that central defence. The Dogi looks good, uh, and obviously Emerson's there as well. So look, it's it's going to be it's going to be interesting to see at what point Mickey comes in. Um, but yeah, Davinson Sanchez, great game. I mean, he, you know, I think but Basuma for me was man of the match. Um, Skippy. I mean, I don't know. I mean, I, I couldn't even believe we saw Skippy flying forward and then to, to score that header as well was just, you know, it was just incredible. I, I mean, I'm sure you were there as well. I haven't seen it, seen you boys back, but 
I'm sure you're just kind of sitting there going, "Are we in dream world? Is this is this Tottenham Hotspur? We're, we've got our, we've got. We thought when we named that team, we're all getting absolutely battered, six, seven, eights, and everything well, else. Well, Sim right? did predict four two. <laughs> oh well, let's hope he let's hope he gets it wrong with all the other the other predictions, right? I'm not I'm not going to get any predictions right. I'm not going to get any predictions right. But look, I think it's exciting. I think I think we you know if. If, and I said this earlier, I know I make some wild predictions and most of them don't come true, but I think if we get to a final, Emerson's going to score the winner and then I'm coming for everyone. <laughs> I'm coming for everyone. All those haters, all those people calling him Chicken Royale. I mean, you should have seen my face on Sunday when he did that Jackie Chan backflip. Laura just, <laughs> Laura just, looked, at me. Laura just looked at me and she went, you don't need to say a word, your face says it all. <laughs> and that's why we need to love him, man. That's why we love him. That's why we love the GOAT. Um, but look, boys, um, I think we just need to be positive. Um, obviously, everyone's going to say, well, you still lost. The The result was Spursy. You were in control of the game and, and the usual narrative. But I think, look, um, I, I, you, know, I, you know, I always want to try and be positive. And, uh, and I'm buzzing for Sunday. We're going we're gonna to tear the studio up, Sim. Exactly. This is the studio ain't going to be in rain standing if we get the win on Sunday. It'll be the last oh, exactly. ever game in the exactly. studio, so enjoy it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> but Ben, Ben, enjoy, enjoy Sunday. Sim, I will see you on Sunday, Looking and uh, we're going to strap ourselves in for a roller coaster. All Big right. up, Barry. Thanks for coming on today, and we'll see Big you up, soon. Boy. See you soon. Big up, and last but not least. It's KPV, people. Yo, you like KPV? What's up, what's up? What's yeah, up KPV? I'm... How you doing? Good, man. And I hear Ben's going on Sunday, so don't have to put up with him. <laughs> <laughs> what <did he> say? <laughs> don't have to put up with him. Yeah, definitely right. 100%. <laughs> KPV, who, who let out that secret? <laughs> 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 George from my by now pissed off, man. Like, I put this name on for a reason, because, like, we have to keep Paris Lich. Like, yeah, as you heard what Brian Diggs said, he played left wing for Croatia. So, keep him. Like, just not in defence, though. So, it's what, I'm, it's what I ask. And do not play him at left wing back, because, yeah, he got assists than any other player Tottenham last season. And, but, yeah, keep him. Like, he's... He's probably still going to be in the Croatia for the Euros anyway, so it'll give him confidence after the season finishes. But I, I actually thought Skip was man of match today. And name me a player who scored two goals against a team that won the league last season, like a team that has won the league the last season. Name me a player who scored uh, a player Harry, scored two Harry goals. Kane? Like, yeah, like. Okay. Yeah. And... Oh, in pre-season has to be in pre-season. Yeah. <laughs> um, when, when we when we played uh, Juventus in that pre-season, did anyone score two that day? Harry Klaas from halfway line, and yeah, it's. I think they can still use the GIF. You like if you type in Harry Kane GIF, it'll come up with that. And Chesney was in goal. Chesney, the Guna, like Polish man, like. Do one me. You go bastard, man. Like, we beat Brian on pens as well, and we still like Ericsson missed two penalties anyway. Juventus fine, and at least we beat Brian in their own backyard. Like that, people saying we won the Aldi Cup, Kane won that, and we just won the Tiger Cup. Like, bomb Kalia blood, bomb Kalia, out of blood. Two children, <laughs> a decade. Like, yeah, who cares about the pre-season trophies? Like. Also, fans saying that's pre-season, but then Carl, not Carl, anything. Carl, who who played well today? Do you think Skippy, man, Ollie Skip, Ollie, Ollie Skip, like three goals for Tottenham. Like obviously, you saw his goal against Chelsea. I know you two were there, and I know Brian was in the studio with Marlon and Louis, a Chelsea fan, or Sam, mm -hmm. his name was. And you know, you know I too think... much, KPV. Skip, man, man of match, like <laughs> can he? Is he going to can he keep that form in like Richarlison has going into the new season? Like, I don't like if Kane does leave net at the end of this season, like, and I know I'm not, 
I know you're probably going to hear me what I am going to say, but I'm not going to say anything else because you hate when I mention old players, so I'm not going to mention one. Do but, I only hate when you mention one certain player, not all old players. Ben didn't like when I mentioned, when I asked a question to him and Barry during the World Cup, who is the only player to wear number 23 and 5? Well, 5 and 23. <laughs> and I don't need to know. Well, why, why, why are you bringing him up? <laughs> I'm just saying, man. Like, Kane ain't going to do what he's going to do. Like, what he did. So, 100% like, he's not going to do what he's no, going to do no, because no. Kane has self-respect. And, like, yeah, he he wants to win stuff, but, like, he he's definitely going to start on Sunday against Brentford. Like, I, I've got him in my FPL team already. I just put him in. So, the points are coming, and so everyone get ready. But, yeah, I'm not going to be negative because, as you heard, Barry, we, we need to be positive, boys. Like, look forward to Sunday and... I wonder if we're wearing a home kit or a away kit at Brentford because it's we've been question. wearing away kits and we can't win at Brentford. I know Arsenal can and Liverpool can't because they lost last season. Arsenal are the only team who can win there, but we haven't. We can't win away at Brentford. But have we won at Sunday Brentford since they've come up? We haven't two draws, isn't it? Um... Um, yeah. 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 Away. And the year before that, we beat them in the cup away, didn't we? At home. Yeah. You know that? Home. Hold on. Hold on. Hold up a sec, boys. We beat Hold them up. in the semi final at the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium on our road to the final because yeah. Son and Sissoko. Son always scores against Brentford and Kane finally did. But yeah, he scored home and away, but we didn't beat them away in, what, 21 22. It was February, March time. And we all thought Brian Daigle was big one, but that's going to come Sunday if we don't win, and you're going to see me do it. But this changes. I said after, before the Chelsea game at home that that hoodoo ends when we beat the man. The away hoodoo at Brentford, that ends as well. We already ended the away one against Chelsea when we beat them at the bridge when Conte was boss. So can we beat Brentford away on Sunday? That ends as well. So I've got a few right before. So this one is going to be right. And I see Simeon here has gone for Haaland, player this season, golden boot. And Ben here has gone for Kane. I'm going to double your odds and go for Son again. And Son, Blair, golden boot. Yeah, but Kane's won three and Thierry's only won four. Two or three, but like I'm going for Son again. But, yeah, Son, I'm sticking with Ronaldo. Player of the year, Kane. Playmaker, mad. And, like, there's no That's way right, City... Madison. Will win. There's no way City will win a league four years in a row because that's never been done. And it wouldn't surprise me if they do. But I see you two, Jabroni, who's gone for City, not Arsenal. Like, according to the bookies, they're the favourites to win it. But, as I said... Last season, if Arsenal win the league, I'm leaving the UK. So you two better do that. And <laughs> where are you going? Where are you going? Canada. Going to Canada, mate. Because that's you're going to move in. You're going to move in with Daigle. <laughs> Piss off! Like, I've, got family over there. I've got family over there, so why not? Like you two are definitely going there for the World Cup anyway. Like you said, you want to, but I'll see you guys there. But obviously, right. we've got the Euros coming up. We've got the Euros coming up after the Premier League. So, and well done to the free line there, Like, <laughs> nice theory on penalty. So, come on, girls. Do us proud Saturday against Colombia. Sorry, Big Dave, but your country's getting slapped up. <laughs> England winning Damn the World right. Cup. Getting slapped England up. Winning it. England winning the Women's World Cup. We're European champions and we're winning this tournament because... You always tell you, well, love by Mary Pino. You let the country down, like people saying, Saka let England down the Euros. Bomb Kalia Blad. He didn't let the country down. I blame Gareth Southgate for taking off Declan Rice. And, um, yeah, that's the reason why we lost in the final. But that's not going to happen again Definitely because look. they haven't won a It's won definitely a not going to happen again, Carl. But look, it's always great to chat yeah. to you, my friend. Cheers for calling man. in. And I'll see you Sunday. So, see you and Sunday. as always, 
Come on, you Spurs. Fuck off, no. <laughs> Big oh, up to KPB, go. always going out with a bang. And that brings an end to the post-match fan show. Um, a mammoth day here at We Are Tottenham TV. Back again here tomorrow for player ratings and more Tottenham updates and more Harry Kane saga news. <coughs> <laughs> <laughs> End the stream, Sammy. End the stream. <laughs> like some